greatest, greatest speakers, speakers ever. back again this year. <laughs> we decided we were going to turn the tables and have a little bit of fun this time. So this is Ryan Serpent, Hello. Who, is, <laughs> who is the VP, uh, the Executive VP of Nest Seekers. And also oh, we're, we're actually not allowed to use titles in New York City anymore. Oh, okay. That, so they'll they'll say, shoot me. They, so you just say, I'm with Nest Seekers? Yeah, Licensed Associate Real Estate Broker. It took away all titles because people started saying, like, you're in the business for a day. It was like Ryan Serhant, Master of Real Estate Universe. <laughs> Nest Seekers International. People would believe it. Right? Yeah. That was the rumor anyway. Um, and and also That's how I am, recognized right? him as uh, one of the actors, but not an actor. He was the reality TV. Yes. On Bravo's Millionaire, Million Dollar Listing New York. Yes. Yes. So. Um, Woo! But we're, we're going to do this. <laughs> Drink coffee, people. What is going on? I've been up for five hours. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> We're going to talk about how Ryan has built a business using media. It's a media-driven business. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how you got started because one of the biggest things that people ask is, you know, it's reality TV. We see you doing real estate. But did the acting come first? Yes. Did the celebrity come first, or did real estate come first? Talk a little bit about how you got started. Oh, it's like the Bible. It's, uh, so I went to New York in 2006, really, really brief. I tell this story a lot, but I went to New York in 2006 because I got a role on As the World Turns, and I was living in Colorado on a ranch. My parents were painting fence, and that just sort of happened. I sent them in a DVD, moved to New York, um, and that was in 2006, and I did that for like a year-ish, year and a half. And then they killed me. And uh, then I had no job, and I was living in a city on 31st and Broadway. Sorry. Living in the city on 31st and Broadway, 38 West 31st Street, if you go there. Very pretty, very, very small apartments with group bathrooms. Um, and I didn't know what to do. I was hand modeling a little bit, and I had a friend from college who said, You should get into real estate. It's the greatest thing in the world. It's like stealing candy from a baby, and this was at the beginning of 2008. So I said, okay, I can make my own schedule, this is great, I don't ever want to be a real estate broker, that is the worst thing in the world. I don't know who would want to do that, and so I got my license in the summer, and then I started on September 15, 2008. And I only know that date, because that was the day I came in Brothers Fog and Bankruptcy. So that was the right. day. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't mean anything to me, I mean, it's like, wow, that sucks for a lot of people. And and that's how I kind of got into the business, very much from the ground up. And my first clients were people I met at Starbucks and on the corner of 49th and Madison and going to Saks Fifth Avenue, which was right there by our office. And then randomly the show started doing this casting notice like a month, yeah, a year so you later. Read, you read the notice. Now, did someone actually bring you that notice and say, hey, I think you should audition for this? Or did you find it yourself? No, Eddie Shapiro, who's the CEO of Nessigers, called me and said, like, you, I can't do an Israeli accent, but it's like, <laughs> you, you used to act, right? I said, yes, and he said, you should do this. And he sent a bunch of us, and I went to the Hudson Hotel for an open casting call in the beginning of 2010 with 3,000 other agents, and that was it. Wow, yeah. how would you know you made a call back? No, like two months later, they, they called and said, you know, you're one of 450 finalists. And then a month later, they called again, and they'd narrowed it down, and then we would do like a Skype, and then they'd want me to, you know, write something, and then they, they narrowed it down to like 16, and they came here, and then they followed us each around for half a day. And I think that's where I, I really won, because I, I think everybody else was sort of like, okay, follow me around. This is how I eat my breakfast. This is... This is my office, this is what I do, and I planned the greatest six hours you, you would ever have seen in the history of the world. Like, I took them, I took them on a roller coaster of insanity through the, through the city, like Central Park, getting calls from like Saudi princes wanting $50 million apartments to where they were like, oh my god, who is this? <laughs> now here I am. Now here you are. Yeah. Nice. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what drives you every day. Is Fear. it? Is it well, <laughs> but I mean, I'm curious. Is it waking up knowing that you have so many people actually following you on social media and following you through the show and following you, or and that you actually have you know this reputation, or is it the hunger for the real estate and building your business? Because one of your sayings is expand, expansion, right? Always expand. Yes. 
Um, it's a mixture of both. And I wasn't joking. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of fueled by fear every day. Like the fear of not performing, the fear of, of not selling more, the fear of not living up to my potential. And that's the biggest fear that I have. That's what I tell my team every day. It's like, you are, you're like, you, you have everything in the world. You are in New York City. You can sell New York City real estate. Look at all these emails and letters I get from people all over the world. Like literally, this show airs in 180 countries to 22 million people. And they send letters to my office. And a lot, it's a, it's, a lot of it is very, very, very humbling. So it's like you, you live here, you live in Manhattan. Right. You get to go around and show these apartments. I can sell something. Right. Sorry. <laughs> but like it, 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 it drives me so absolutely off the wall and I get so angry. When I don't see people you know, living up to their potential, just making something of it. If you want to sell more, go outside. Meet someone on the street. You're in New York City. Look at all these people around here. If they live here, they can afford to do it. Do what I do. Go to Starbucks, find a pregnant woman, and say, you look like you need more room. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was honestly one of my first clients. Yes. She's still a client. That is fabulous. Good, good stuff. <laughs> So a little bit earlier, I know you were backstage and we were, we were listening to Rupert Murdoch talk. And one of the things, because I'm in social media and I follow you in social media, I know that a lot of our real estate community follows you. Talk a little bit about, now Rupert was saying that he didn't really think that social media did a lot um, to drive a lot of their results with his corporation. Well, How has, and I'm not going to say exactly. News Corp or for like Fox? I'm not sure which. <laughs> I think it would have been in general statement, in general. But talk a little bit about how social media has helped drive what you do. Sure. Well, one, I don't think the people who watch Fox really go and post photos of their babies. So <laughs> it's, um, so I think that's why social media probably doesn't affect yeah. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> privacy is a big deal. So I, for me anyway, like you to get yeah. things out there and to consistently brand yourself, social media is instantaneous. So I can send a letter out, and that'll take weeks to go through the post office, to get a mailbox, they said, okay, throw it away, I gotta send another one, I could do a mailer, I could do anything, I could do an e-blast, but brokers, you know, that filters into spam, people don't care. But social media, through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, is an instantaneous way to consistently remind people what you do. So even if you have two followers, and one of them is your mom, at least that is a that is that is an outlet for you to consistently say, "Hey, I just saw this apartment," or "Hey, I just listed this," or "Hey, I'm walking down the street in New York because I'm a real estate broker," and it's it gets it out there. So social media for me has been very powerful, and I get I mean I get a lead through social media probably every day. Wow, that's great. So let's uh, we have to kind of wrap it up really quick. What does the rest of today look like for you? What are you doing when you get out of here? Oh my goodness. Um, I have a pitch at 11 on oh, my calendar right there. Let's see if I remember. At 11 o'clock, I have to order 42nd and 5th, and I have to do a pitch for a big fashion designer for their apartment in Cooper Square. And then at 12 o'clock, I have to go to our listing at 157 West 57. So I'm doing a photo shoot for a big magazine. I have a movie coming out. I did a movie, Media Driven, with Ben Stiller. You should see it. It comes out March 27th. Um, and I think I have to get, I think there's just going to be nudity involved in the photo shoot, which would be good for selling a listing. <laughs> and then I have a closing after that. I have a couple showings. I have another listing pitch. I have a broker's open in the East Village for my new building, 277 East 7th Street. You should come, 7th and C, uh, at E, and yeah, the third man down there. And then I have dinner with my fiance, and she will love it. I just said that. Yay. All right. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. I appreciate it.